Honestly, I have like butterflies in my stomach. I'm not too sure on what to think of this. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of The, the Epic, Epic Family, Family Road, Road Trip. In last week's video, we packed up and began the 3,400 mile or 5,400 kilometer journey from southwestern Arizona through New Mexico, Colorado, Wyoming, and Montana, ending up in North Dakota, just outside of the Theodore Roosevelt National Park. We're just pulling out of camp um, a little late, but I made a big breakfast and had a slow cup of coffee and now we're just going to be running Lando um, before we hit the road. So check this place out. I miss the morning sunrise. <laughs> um, it's just too cozy just sitting there all quiet. So but yeah, here we go. different lakes in this area and they're still frozen over quite solid. We've seen people ice fishing. Um, our big hope is that our lake will at least have a path melted off that we can take a boat into the island. Uh, so we'll have to see how it goes. We still have a couple days before we're there and last report from, the, from our lakes area was raining today so that usually helps to melt the ice. So yeah we're just uh, we're just going and whatever it is, it'll be an adventure. Good morning. So the boys wanted to sleep in the RV. Well, Peter and I stayed in the hotel, but we're ready to hit the road and hopefully make it to Sault Ste. Marie and see how the bike situation is gonna be crossing the border. Keep calling her. All right, thank you. We made it into Sault Ste. Marie last night. Got a hotel unit here, and actually the boys are sleeping in the motorhome. Um, but we're just calling around to find storage for the bikes for a month while we sort out all the paperwork. Uh, we have a um, broker company working on importing the the two KTM 690s into Canada, but there's all kinds of delays and things like that. So. Rather than waiting in Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan, we're going to hopefully find a storage unit very soon. We'll drop off the bikes and head to the lake. Um, I wonder if you have any available? I do have. I got one five by ten. Oh, yeah? Okay. How much is that a month? Uh, that's $50 a month, and then there's $50 refundable security deposit. Okay. We found one that's uh, available, so that's good. Pick up a lock. Uh, there's a hardware store nearby, and we'll head over there. It's kind of too bad we cross the whole country with our bikes until to import them into Canada, so we can get them licensed and insured there, where we have our licenses already. But our border broker, it, we are just a little bit behind. You kind of have to give them like four full days on business days to, you know, f file some paperwork let the border know 72 hours in advance, get that approved, and then, uh, you know, get a time schedule that the border to be able to import. We're gonna put these in storage temporarily, probably only for a week or two at most, and then uh, come back and get them and import them in as paperwork's been sent through the border. Yeah, uh, maybe we'll do a little add -on.
found a place that will take the bikes. And then the nice thing is, is in a month or so when the boys come back to Sault Ste. Marie to get their bikes out of storage, it's only a good, what, 12 20, minutes? Yeah. About 12 minutes across the border. So it'll make it nice and simple for them. Excited to be so close to Canada. He's gonna be so excited. So we have to make the mandatory stop at Tim Hortons for Dan and Pete. Grab a coffee and then we'll be hitting the road. All right, we're back across the border and heading to the lake uh, in Ontario. We're about uh, three hours left to go. We're gonna stop for some shopping. Uh, but uh, we had a great time down there in Arizona and uh, wonderful people, beautiful place and had some pretty cool adventures while we were there so thank you uh, US for your hospitality and now we're gonna spend uh, some, now we're gonna spend some time at the lake. We're really looking forward to that. There's some challenges involved in that obviously being on an island. The temperature's been going up and down this year so it's uh, the latest report is the lake is still quite frozen, so there's no way in, but we're working on a few options, so stay tuned. Hey guys, we made it back to the lake. That was a long journey all the way from southern Arizona to here, uh, but we're here, so this is... Uh, Really nice, a nice uh, relief to be off the road for a bit. Now the lake is still frozen and we're gonna show you that over the next couple of days and we'll drill holes, do whatever we have to to kind of monitor how uh, it melts off. Uh, there's a creek here that's been running into the lake and that section is melted. We can see a bit of open water out there. So we're very close. We hope to be able to get a boat in the water in the next couple of days if, uh, if everything works out. So stick with us as we watch the spring breakup of the ice on the lake and we're going to get in there to the island one way or another. Good morning from the mainland at the lake. So we spent the night here in the motorhome. Every time we uh, go to sell this thing, we find a use for it. It's come very handy last night and will again tonight. Um, as we told you yesterday, the lake's not open enough to get out to the island, uh, but we have some good news. Uh, we have uh, another guy with an island here and this winter he bought a fan boat. And that's something we've been looking at for some time and we now realize that it's going to be a necessity for us to have a fan boat as well. But he bought a fan boat and he's offered to take us into the island on Wednesday so that's really exciting. Today's Tuesday we're going to go shopping, get uh, supplies and food because we don't know how long it'll take for the ice to go off. It's anybody's guess. It could take a week, it could take three weeks so we're going to be prepared for that. Uh, it's going to be an adventure no matter what. Um, so yeah, in the meantime, we're cozy in the motorhome here. We've got heat, as you can hear in the background. We can make a meal, we can make a coffee. We've got a bathroom and uh, comfortable beds for all four of us and the dog. So life is good and we are so excited to get out to the island. We'll, we'll uh, take you with us every step of the way and uh, hopefully it all works out. As much as we didn't want to be driving right now because of uh, just getting off, what was it, six, seven days on the road, um, we are heading into town to get supplies. Very important that we have enough food and all that kind of stuff. We have lots of supplies still in the cabin, thankfully, like toilet paper and all that kind of stuff, but and dry goods, but we need meat. Can't wait to get that smoker going. What else do we need? 
mainly the meat, just like onions, leeks. Oh yeah, so potatoes. lots of veg and meat. That's about it. We have dry goods galore and everything's everything else up there. So, what do you got? <laughs> meat. We got meat and uh, lots of veg that we can freeze when we're not using it. We're gonna go and get a lot of different squashes and stuff that will last a long time. So. Hopefully we're planning that all out right for three weeks. So here's the gear that we're taking in for the two to three weeks that it may take for the ice to melt. Uh, there's a lot of food and things like that. And then of course four people and Lando. We're not familiar with the fan boat. We don't know what its payload is and everything so this may be quite a few loads but we'll see. That was our first time seeing a fan boat in operation. Our, our friend Dan has an island just up there, and this year he bought it, he bought that fan boat, and he's agreed to take us in, which is really nice. Otherwise, uh, we'd be kind of stuck here for a while. So it's going to be about three or four loads, but uh, we just watched them start it up across the ice and across a section of water. So it's an amazing machine. We're going to take you with us. First run inland, of course. He's happy as can be, so are we. I know, go find squirrels. What an awesome feeling to be back at the island. Ah, we can't wait to show you around. Oh, there we go. All right. Oh yeah, everything's in good shape. It smells good. Oh, there's no feeling on earth better than getting back home after what four months? Four months, yeah. Four, four and a half months. Let's get some uh, power going for Ma and get the heat going. Get a fire. Yeah, we uh, we left six full jugs, jerry cans of uh, gas here last fall in preparation for arrival. So that's good. At least one full, two full propane. So that's a month's worth. Step one is check in on the batteries in the solar system here. Awesome. Wow. We got power. 100% battery. Wow. 
love it. So the solar panel's been doing its job while we're away. And I don't even need to start the generator because we have 100% power. Battleborn batteries, you guys have done the job for us. That's our first winter with solar and battery and uh, not being here. So cool. I cannot wait to get settled in and head out there and start doing maple syrup. I think we still have some kindling. Mom's stocked everything before we left. Perfect. It prepares so well that you come back and it's just ready to go. Looking forward to spending all spring and summer and fall, hopefully. Maybe even the winter if I can get a fan boat. Just spending as much time up here as I possibly can. This is definitely my favorite place to be on the planet. You can hear Dan coming back to pick up us in the last load. Honestly, I have like butterflies on my stomach. I'm not too sure on what to think of this, <laughs> going over the ice and then open water. And I'm also just anxious to get back to the cabin and uh, just see everything again. But it's still kind of in the back of my mind, like, did I prepare enough food? for possibly three weeks. It's exciting. I, I look forward to this kind of challenge, I guess. But what a neat concept, the fan boat. We've been looking online now for one, and we think we found one if we can sell the RV. It'd be just perfect sense of security in this type of uh, weather and uncertainty with the ice. in with a, a load of gear 
and then the last trip will be mom with the last couple of bags. breaking all the way over here. Wow! Ah. That's awesome. That was amazing. Yeah. We could hear it cracking pretty good when you were coming across. Oh, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's not much there in places, I don't think. So everything's fully functional here. Oh, yeah. That's sweet. Yeah. The batteries, batteries are at 100%. All at 100%. Really, the batteries are at 100%. Lights just turned on. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Dan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Where's Lando's? Come on, let's go. to be back. Oh, the smell of the fire going in the chimney. There's nothing like it. Unbelievable. What a perfect day. Lynn, let's go. Mm. It smells like the cat. Mm. Ooh. Not too bad, eh? Looks like we just left. Why put so many mouse uh, yeah, things? Yeah, what are you living? Just making enough room to get the smoker in here and uh, get some ribs on or brisket or something. Ooh. No, we didn't spend the winter here. There's enough winter left to enjoy it. Um, Obviously you saw us come in on a fan boat, so we're locked on the island. Um, there's no way off right now, unless we bring in the fan boat again. But it's a nice feeling to be out here in the wilderness, just uh, enjoying the silence. It's amazing. Yeah, everything looks good. Got my cozy jacket again. And then I had a jacket, a pair of pants, swim shorts, and socks up in that cabin with this jacket. So I'm never leaving. Ever again. <laughs> I was just putting wood in the fire, smelling it, and I was picturing, like, can you imagine when I have my forge and my own stove and stuff, and it's just warm in there? They, there is no better place. You make charcoal and then you start forging. <laughs> It looks good. Eh? I was worried about food because I was having all these nightmares that <laughs> uh, something, but the batteries didn't charge the freezer. But it's like as if we never left. So they are definitely a game changer because now, I mean, we can go for as long as we want, as really. Long, yeah, and now that I have the peace of mind that this will keep going. It's just incredible. We can like, fill I'm it up. so relieved. I think I'm going to finally sleep <laughs> tonight. We're probably all going to sleep so good tonight. This makes me so happy. Like, I don't, my shoulders went whoosh. Um, yeah, so all I did when we left, I turned off the main switch. So nothing outside of this room would be using any power except, except this. And, and this it's 12 volt easy. and it just trickles. So. Like, look how much meat we have in here. That's incredible. Like, look at all yeah. that chicken. The veg. Ribs. Ooh, perfect. Bone broth. <laughs> There's even a 
uh, brisket, isn't it? Huge this brisket. is a no. This, this is a pork belly. Oh, pork belly. Oh. This one mm. looks like it's gone. We can smoke some bacon. Uh, there's some beef, fish, wow. strawberries. Nosey. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> season we bought a lot of meat we bought a ton we thought if we're stranded in there for three weeks one thing we're gonna have a lot of is good barbecue I think Lando is so happy to be back that's honestly a really big trip for a dog like Lando it has high energy and needs to run a lot, but he did really, really well. But to see him here relaxing in the sun, running his same trails is something else. Just soaking in everything. It's like all of us were just kind of breathing just a big sigh of relief that we made it here all safely. Everything worked out. Our uh, neighbor Dan buying that fan boat was just heaven sent like an answer to prayer couldn't believe it and so yeah we're super thankful to be here and we're cooking up some yummy ribs some broccoli salad and some baked beans or cowboy beans i think it's gonna be good we got a package shipped to us before we got here to the island from a friend online his name is kyle and he has a really cool uh, Instagram account, and I believe YouTube as well. He's called Beast Overland. But besides being an overlander, he is also an incredibly talented artist. And he did a pencil drawing for us, which we haven't seen yet, so this could be cool. And uh, it's of Lando, and it's got all kinds of neat things hidden in the uh, in the fur of Lando, I believe. So Lando, Let's see uh, what Lando thinks too. We'll get it opened up here for you and let's check it out. Lando, this is you. This is really tight. Hey. Well, thanks for helping, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Keep going. Keep going. There's still more. Oh, wow. This is amazing. This is crazy. We're getting wow. close. Got it. Lando, come and look. Unbelievable. This is, oh, look wow. at that, Lynn. That is amazing. Here, sit. Sit, Lynn. Sit. 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 Look. Look at that. Look That's at that. you. Oh, he got He nailed it. The, the uh, facial expression is so Lando. Oh, um, look. Our names are all in it. Even well the bear done. bell. An antler, Carol. Finally got an <laughs> antler. <laughs> That's the Kyle, you, you're very talented and just uh, want to let you know we really appreciate this beautiful drawing. We'll treasure it. We'll find a spot in the cabin for it. Uh, place of honor. So thank you. Uh, I, it looks like a lot of hours went into this. Well, look, it even has care oh, right there. Wow. There's probably so much here. We're going to have to spend some time Yeah. really looking at all the details. But That's for now, amazing. it will go in the cabin and then maybe even in the truck. So ah, we'll yeah. see. This is beautiful. Well wow. done. So last year we measured the ice when it was coming in to see when we could get safely onto it. And then we had to leave just when the ice breakup was happening. But thankfully this year we're able to be here and experience this. I've been wanting to experience a melt off of the ice for a long time. So we're really excited to be doing this. But step one, I'm gonna get a reading on how thick the ice is currently. And then we'll do that every day. And we don't know if it's uh, going to take three days or three weeks. We have no idea, but we're ready for whatever happens. So, I haven't done this for a while. Right there. Ten inches? About eight inches. Uh, Eight or nine. It's about nine feet of hard surface here. About nine inches here, 
I'm gonna check this hole we drilled first. Yeah, about seven and a half. Wow. So there's still a lot of ice right here, a lot of thick ice right here by the island. We don't know what it's like in the middle and we're not about to go out there unless we have full flotation and ice picks. Coming in with the fan boat, there's some big pressure cracks which have open water between the, the ice pieces. So we're just gonna monitor it day by day as we go. But yeah, eight inches roughly all around the island here. So because we're still in winter mode, we don't have flowing water in the cabin. We won't be able to do that until the, water, the ice melts off pretty much and we're gonna be pretty sure that we're not gonna get really cold temperatures that night. Right now it's freezing every night. Um, so that'll be in a couple of weeks. So in the meantime, we're gonna drill a couple holes, make a bigger area to dip our pails in and, and bucket water up to the cabin. So let's do it. Up ice on the way. Kidding. So this jerry can here is our water filtration system. We just pump it through. We, we put a pressure pump on this side, and it pumps it through a huge filter inside, and pure drinking water comes out. Even though the lake is very clean and I think we'd be fine drinking straight out of the lake we don't want to play around when we have a good water purification system like this so now we just carry it up to the cabin and we can do dishes we can heat it up for showers and uh, drinking water Swallow a bone. <laughs> and in the meantime, we'll, we'll see, see you down, down the road. road.